So you're just back from Sundance. You you were on the jury up there. That's what right. Was, what was that like? Look, I think sometimes as a filmmaker, you you don't get to see enough film, and and particularly like small, um, less accessible movies are can be quite hard to so it, hard to get to see and actually sit down and watch it. So it was really fun being in that jury and actually f having to see f movies and I probably wouldn't have seen otherwise. Um, very interesting. What was your sort of favorite film that you saw there? Well, the ones that we gave prizes for various reasons. We were, I mean, they were really, and, and we were in complete agreement. It wasn't, the jury was in complete agreement. It wasn't as if there isn't any of the prizes where I kind of went, oh, I didn't really like that or anything like that. And you won the Golden Globe uh, for this movie. Uh, it, how how was that? That must have been a strange kind of getting in front of the world experience. Uh, it was a strange uh, kind of. I was I was kind of paralyzed. I I don't know why. For some reason, I hadn't expected it. I know. And uh, <laughs> and um, and so the table was sitting like saying it's you it's you and I you know it was announced and that for some reason I didn't even hear it uh, you know the way where you kind of a bit and and um, I went up and I had written the speech because you were supposed to write a speech before any such event and I had actually written the speech but I couldn't I couldn't even read it I couldn't see the letters in front of me because I was just um, <laughs> I was, um, yeah paralyzed now the movie um, really struck me as unusual in the following way. It has to do with the way you're telling one story and you're revealing something else underneath. There's a subtext, there's a whole other agenda that doesn't appear to be on the surface. Now this is just my, <laughs> my interpretation of it, but what I mean is that you're telling one story in, in Denmark and another story in Africa and there's this one pivotal sort of um, transitional character of the doctor mm -hmm. who's dealing with uh, one kind of power manipulation or bullying mm -hmm. in, in Africa, mm -hmm. uh, these, these, these terrible uh, warlords and, and the depredations in, in that culture, and then this other um, more domesticated kind of, of power manipulation with these young boys. Um, how did you, you went back to working with your your old uh, partner, your screen screenwriting partner. Um, how did you come up with this story? You know, we had been we'd been kind of talking about how fragile the Danish ideal is, how how fragile that sort of very idyllic, very privileged, very comfortable, um, very safe uh, environment is. How fragile is that really? And does the enemy really always come, is the threat always from the outside or could it potentially come from the inside? We've been discussing that and at the same time um, Mr. Jensen had written some scenes where some boys were being interrogated by the police and these scenes are not actually in the film but they, they're, they're reminiscence of them and, and there was something about that whole um, mix of those two pretty different things which sort of fell into place and which we liked and, and then we started making the story and, and, and he started writing the script. It's kind of fun process where we um, actually make up the story while he writes scenes in the script. This is one of the reasons why I've always really, really liked your movies because they feel organic. They feel like they've been created out of nothing and there's something very, um, I think it allows you to be more thoughtful. And more, As an audience. I think it allows you, the filmmaker to, and the screenwriter, to be more thoughtful in presenting something more provocative to the audience. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, I, I mean, it is a very organic process, and I do also work very organically when I shoot, and I do change a lot, and, and I change a lot while editing. I, I, I try to, to remain completely open and yet not lose the, the, the distinct sense of direction. And, and 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 that's a kind of a um, very intricate balance because you want to you want to be open to great ideas and great notions and and inspirational stuff, but you also want to make sure that you are consistent that, you, that there is a consistency that there is a forward movement which makes sense and which isn't all over the place. So it's that kind of it's a very delicate balance, and it's I mean that's probably 
why it's so I find it so exciting making movies because it's but you also are allowed I mean we were I wrote about this uh, a while back um, with 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 when it, at the wedding I think it was around yeah. that time um, that was nominated also yes yes and um, the 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 question is that the freedom that filmmakers have in other countries when there is a smaller budget involved allows you to be so much more experimental and so much more daring than you can be in this country unless you're functioning at the level of a very low budget independent film and yet you get support in 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 Denmark for these films. Well, in Denmark, I'm not considered um, experimental. And no, you are at the Denmark. top of the heap no, in no, Denmark. No, no, but in Denmark, I'm also considered mainstream. Or that is Europe, so interesting In Europe, me. in general, I'm considered mainstream. And actually, you know, I'm not really considered interesting enough to to be part of various European uh, sort of... Uh, um, Avant-garde. Well, yeah, uh, because, I'm, because I'm too mainstream. And, <laughs> and I've always been... The thing is, the thing is for me, it's... It, it, I'm very happy about that. I think it's very funny. And I'm very happy about it because I think, you know, for me, there's no doubt that I want to tell stories with substance and st stories that ha has a, carries a lot of meaning. But I do want to be able to address an audience with them. I'm not particularly interested in telling a story with a lot of meaning, which is only going to be seen by two people in a very, very extremely sophisticated cinema very far away. Uh, and and there, is, there is this kind of old-fashioned European um, tradition of being ex incredibly elitist, where I'm not part of that. I'm not part of that very elitist club. I see club. that these <laughs> films are very accessible. They always have been, and they've been about real people. Yeah, know? and that's not and, and real problems. Yes. Now, 